Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Samuel Maas. And this is Dr. Samuel. And we have started looking at calculations involving decimal fractions by first looking at approximations. And we have looked at approximations using decimal places and significant figures. And today, we move on to approximation of decimals using standard form. But before we do that, I want to go back to just a last couple of examples on significant figures, just to show you um, a, a, a kind of problem that we, haven't, we didn't do last time. Remember, we, we said that to approximate to significant figures, we start counting from the first number that is not zero. So look at this example, where we have to approximate 0 0.00591, first to one significant figure. So if we look at the decimal, we realize the first set of figures there are zeros, 0, 0.00. The first number that is not zero is five. So to approximate to one, significant figure, we write the zeros, zero point, point, zero, zero, and since the number after the five is nine, we increase the five by one to six. And that is point zero zero five nine one to one significant figure. So we leave out the full set of zeros. So to two significant figures, it will be 0 0.005. The second figure, significant figure is 9. And the number after that is 1. So the 9 remains. So the answer is 0 0.0059. Now to four significant figures, now note this, 0, 0.00, 0, first figure 5, second figure 9, third figure 1. There is no fourth figure in the actual decimal. So, but we have to approximate to four significant figures. Therefore, we add another zero. And so this is that decimal to four significant figures. So note this. So we'll now go on to standard form. To approximate to standard form, we write a number, whatever decimal we are given, we write it as in the form A times 10 to the power of an integer n. So a is a decimal fraction, and n is an integer. Remember, an integer is a positive or negative whole number. So in order to understand that, we need to understand exactly what 10 to the n means. What does multiplying by 10 to the n mean? So let's look at some specific examples for this. What is 10 to the power of 1? All this means is that you have 10 one time. So, or 10 times 1. So the answer is 10. So if you multiply by 10 to the power of 1, you are multiplying by 10, or you are bringing the decimal point forward one place. So for example, 2.3 times 10 is just 23. If you have 10 squared, that is the same as 10 times 10, which is 100. So if you are multiplying by 10 squared, you bring the point forward 
two places, the same number you have as the index, 10 squared. And if you have 10 to the power of 5, that is 10 multiplied by itself 5 times, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, times 10 which is 100,000, five zeros, the same number of um, zeros as the index that you have in. So if you are multiplying by 10 to the 5, you bring the point forward five places. But what does 10 to the power of negative 1 mean? A negative index means 1 over the number to the positive index. So one to, to 10 to the negative 1 is just 1 over 10 to the power of 1, which is 10. So multiplying by 10 to the negative 1 is the same as dividing by 10 or bringing the point backwards one place. So let's look at another one. Let's, if you have 10 to the minus 4, that is the same as 1 over 10 to the 4. So if you are multiplying by 10 to the negative 4, you bring the point backwards four places. That's the same as dividing by 10 to the 4. It's important you understand this in order to under, understand how to write any decimal in standard form. So let's look at some examples on this. So we are, to, we are writing the following decimals A to E in standard form. Remember the first part of the standard form must be a number between one and 10. So the first thing we do is Note we have 23.2, which is greater than 10. So how many places do we shift the point backwards to get a number between 1 and 10? That is one place, just one place. So we're going to get 2.32 multiplied by, but 2.32 to get back to, because that, in standard form, what you get must be equal to the decimal. To get the 23.2 back, you must bring the point forward one place or multiply by 10. So that's times 10 to the power of 1. So this 1 here is the same number of places that you initially move the point backwards, or you can think of it as after you have moved it backwards, the number of places you must move it forward to get back the decimal that you have. So this is 23.2 in standard form. B, 3510.5. We have to move the point backwards one, two, three places to get 3.51. Zero. So that is times 10 to the power of 3. The same number of places you move the point backwards to get 3.510. Let's look at C. 231,000. That's a whole number. It means the point is after the last digit. You need to move the point 1, 2, 3, 4, five places to get 2.31. But you don't have to add the other zeros unless you are bringing it to a, a, a number of significant figures that would involve the zeros. For example, four, five, or six significant figures. So you can leave it as 2.31, but times 10 to the power of the same number of places you moved it backwards, and that is five pieces. So by 10 to the 5. Now look at D, 0 0.132. That's a number that's less than 1. 
So in order to get a number between 1 and 10, this time you must bring the point forward one place to get 1 point 3 2 times 10 to the power of what? Remember, to get 1.32, I move the point forward one place or multiply by 10. So to get the point 132 back, I must bring the point backwards one place, which means 10 to the negative 1 or dividing by 10. So know the difference between these examples where you have a number less than 1 and the first 3 where you have a number greater than 10. So E, 0 0.000257, to get a number between 1 and 10, I will bring the point forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces to get 2.57. So it is times 10 to the negative 5. Since it is 5 spaces, I had initially moved the point forward to get 2.57. Now, let's go back to B. Because I seem to have forgotten a digit in the answer because there is a 5 at the end. So the answer should be 3.5105. So let's put in the 5. 3.5105 times 10 to the 3. And that is writing approximating decimals to standard form. If you have any questions on that, you can send me a message either by email or on YouTube. So, next video, we'll be looking at actual simplification of decimal fractions by multiplying, dividing, addition, subtractions. So, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel or you can like or share this video. See you all soon.